Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hopefully y'all blessed. Hopefully y'all amazing. Hopefully y'all great. If you're new, my name is Michael Benjamin. I'm the CEO of Consumer Ammunition Tactics or CAT. We basically help you with consumer law education. We help you with uh, your credit repair business. We help you make money. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even going to cap y'all. I'm going to get straight to it. We're going to be talking about how to start a profitable credit repair business. We're going to talk about how to basically get past 10K a month, right? Because a lot of people, a lot of people that have credit repair businesses, they sleep on doing a lot of stuff, right? This is why we have stuff like mentorships and all that. But I'm going to teach y'all for free how to start your business, how to continue your business, improve it. We'll go from there. If you get value out of today, just subscribe, tap in, go binge watch my videos on YouTube, right? So we're going to start with, you know, why should you even start a credit repair business? Why should you improve on your current credit repair business? Because there's a lot of people that start it, then they end up quitting. So it's a lot of discipline that's required with having a credit repair business, right? So we're going to get straight into it. Number one, it's not hard, right? A lot of people overthink the process. A lot of people make it super deep, but it's it's technically not hard, but it's not it's not easy at the same time. It's just about having the correct information and knowing how to go, go about and execute it. It's like, like I said about discipline, like running any business, right? Especially if you've never ran a business before. If you've just been like an employee your whole life, you just have like a nine to five mindset your whole life. It's not going to be the easiest thing in the world. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's definitely possible. So just a little bit about my situation. When I was working my nine to five job, if you don't know, I was working as a chemical engineer. So I was making six figures as a chemical engineer. I was able to build a profitable credit business to where I was able to leave my job. So I probably know something about building a credit repair business, right? So anyways, I didn't have that nine to five mindset. So even though I was working a nine to five, you can still be a boss while you're working the nine to five because you're you're implementing and observing what they're doing at that nine to five. You know what I'm saying? So I was using my nine to five as leverage. And I encourage all of y'all, if you're working a nine to five right now, especially if you don't love it, use that nine to five as leverage. Use them. They're using you. They'll get rid of you in 2.2 seconds. If the CEO wants like 5% increase in their salary, they're going to get rid of you. You know what I'm saying? So I need y'all to really realize like it's a recession. People getting laid off left and right. They're looking at you as a number. So you want to use them. Use your nine to five to where you could be able to go. I use my nine to five leverage. I was able to leave, right? They could, who knows? If God forbid, if I, if I kept working there, maybe they would have let me go. You know, so I just want y'all to, I just want y'all to not have that nine to five mindset. When I say don't have that nine to five mindset, think like a boss. How can I work outside of here? How can I, you know, get myself to the next level? So one thing too, it's very lucrative. So having a credit repair business is very lucrative. You can make a lot of money and it's very scalable. You can make a lot of money while working less, right? That's why I love it. I'm able to go to the gym whenever I want. I'm able to basically do whatever I want whenever I want. But at the same time too, you know, as as you are the boss of it, you got to not like when you, I'm, I'm talking about working full time in your business. Right. It's not even for people that work their nine to five and their credit business. If you're working full time, you still got to be responsible because you don't have your boss telling you like, oh, this deadline has to be due and all that. So be responsible too. everyone needs credit. Everyone needs credit at some point. So it could be a vehicle. It could be a, a house. It could be to start a business, you know what I'm saying? You could fix your own damn credit and then go invest in mentorship, such as our mentorship, the CAT Credit Retire Your 9 to 5 Mentorship, and you just get handheld through the whole process, right? Especially if you don't know what you're doing. This is why, this is why I'm always speaking about how people, you know, they be cheap and they mess up this whole situation. We're going to get into cheap people later on, but yeah, keep in mind that everyone needs credit at some point. So this is why you want to, Start a credit repair business or continue what you already got going on. It's a perfect way to impact lives and leave a nine to five you do not love. So we're big on happiness around here, right? We're big on happiness and choices. I did not love my nine to five. I was making good money, but I did not love it. So that's why I was building something at the same time. I was using my nine to five as leverage and I encourage y'all to do the same. And if no one's ever told you, I want you to understand that it will get better. It will get better. You just got to take action. If you're being cheap, you're not taking action. I'm, I can't promise you it's going to get better. It might stay the same. You know what I'm saying? But if you're taking action, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, it will get better. I promise you. You know, God is going to see you through. 
whatever situation you're in right now, if you're in a negative situation, but you're just like talking to God, you're like, you know, I want to get out of my situation. I want to get in a better situation. Maybe God brought you to this video to look at, you know, what I'm talking about and understand that it will get better. So I'm praying for your situation. If you take action, that it will get better. If you're cheap, if you got a poor mindset, if you got a nine to five mindset, I don't know what to tell you. You know what I'm saying? This video was brought to you so you could change that cheap mindset. So let's get into it. How to actually start your credit repair business, right? I blacked out the steps because I don't want you to look at all the steps at once. So let's uh da, 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 let's let's unblack this one. Sound racist, huh? I was playing. All right. So number one, identify your business name and register your LLC. So technically, you can start your business without even having an LLC because it's like when you're making the money. Okay, keep track of the money, but. You don't necessarily have to. I I, I just want y'all to take action, right? So if you don't have your business name, don't stress out about it. Just keep in mind, like, okay, I got to create my business name later on because we want we don't want to we don't want to have analysis paralysis. If you don't know what analysis paralysis is, basically where you're overthinking and then you just don't take action. We don't want to fall for the law of diminishing intent. If you don't know the law of diminishing intent, it's basically where you're essentially like. The longer it takes you to do something, the more likely you're not going to do it. So I don't want y'all to overthink yourselves. So just identify your business name, register your LLC. If you got to skip that step and just start making money, taking on clients, do what you got to do and then do it in the meantime. But that's typically step number one, right? So you can uh, figure out the LLC creation process. In my mentorship program, we walk step-by-step -step how to create an LLC, but I mean, you can just Google it for free. So keep that in mind. Alarms going crazy. All right, so identify. Identify the core values of your credit repair business. So a lot of people, a lot of people skip number two, right? A lot of people skip this step. And this is where a lot of people mess up because it's like, if you don't stand for nothing, if you don't stand for something, you stand for nothing, right? So you got to stand for something. Just to give you an example, I'm not telling you to steal our core values because your core values should be based off of what your core values are. But our business, a business is cat, right? Consumer ammunition tactics. Some of our um, core values, literally the acronym cat. Consistency, ability, and transparency. We're consistent in making sure that our clients get what they deserve as far as, you know, making sure that they're able to get their desired result. If it's getting the deletions, you know, by any means necessary, whether it's litigation or disputing, right? That's a consistent part, right? We very consistent in making sure we do it. Ability, we're competent. We've been doing this since like 2021, right? So the competency is right there. So that's a core value as well. And then uh, transparency, just being transparent about the process. Credit repair specifically is one of those industries where a lot of people are scamming, right? So we're big on being transparent with our process and just letting people know like, you know, you can't make guarantees that violates the CROA. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. If you don't know about the CROA, you just got to get out of that cheap mindset. Just get in our mentorship program. Everything will be easier, right? So yeah, just keep that in mind. So identify your core values. Some of our core values as well. We have three L's, law, leverage, and legacy. Law, consumer law. We're teaching about consumer law. We're primarily using consumer law. Yes, we can use factual disputing, but the primary method is consumer law. It's so powerful. Leverage. How do we leverage our credit? How do we teach the people we fix their credit to go ahead and now leverage their credit? Right when we go and get them funding, that kind of thing, and a legacy, just making sure that people know, especially our mentees, even our clients, know that it's a legacy thing. You want to use your credit to help your next generation. We're all not going to be physically here forever, you know what I'm saying? So you got to leave your mark while you're here. So just identify your core values. A lot of people skip this step, but definitely focus on this step, and this step will definitely help you have a better business. And it might not seem like it, but it's definitely going to help you make more, more money as far as scaling past that 10K a month mark. I personally saw when I sat down, I identif identified the co our core values. When I explained it to my team members, when we're living by those, by those uh, core values, you basically want to hire based off of your core values and fire based off of your core values. That's deeper, high level stuff. But, you know, in the beginning, you might just be starting just by yourself. But I just want you all to be aware of that. All right, let me uh, let me show y'all this one too. All right, so create your client's avatar. Create your client avatar. So what does your client look like? What does your client do, right? So an example of our client avatar. 
we have many client avatars, but just let me give y'all just one example. I talk about it in my mentorship too. So everything I'm telling y'all, I'm giving y'all the free information right now, but I'm I'm seriously letting y'all know if y'all really want to succeed and get to the next level, if you know you're not cheap, you know you don't have a poor mindset, you know you don't got that nine to five mindset, just get in the mentorship program. We're going to talk about it in a little bit. But anyways, back to free information. So the client avatar, an example of a client avatar we have is a Maya, black woman, 31 years old. She's a registered nurse. So she's making money, right? Registered nurses, they make money. She's been working as a registered nurse, but she just wants to impact lives in a different way. So as a registered nurse, she's working with people, but she's tired of working those long hours just to make money. So what, what's a pain point? She's staying up at night like, oh, I, I want to make money, but I don't want to work as much as how I'm working right now. So now she comes on over to Cat. She learns about this credit stuff. She learns that credit is a way where she can still impact lives and get to the next level. So when we talk about our ideal client that we work with within our mentorship, that's basically one of our client avatars. When we talk about you fixing people's credit, right, which is probably where you're going to start or what you're currently doing within your own business, you got to identify your client avatar. So spend some time thinking, like, what does my client look like? What do they do? The cheaper your prices are, the more of a headache it's going to be. You got to understand credit repair. Credit repair comes basically with mostly people that have like a broke mindset. You listening to this right now, maybe you have a broke mindset. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you do, but it's possible, right? Because people that typically need credit repair are typically, I know life happens, but typically are people that are financially irresponsible. That's just, you know, what, what it comes to. We just got to stick to reality, right? You can be offended. You can not be offended. It's really up to you, but that's just really what it is. So when you're identifying who you're going to work with, you got to identify, do I really want to work with these cheap people or do I want to have a price barrier to where I get a certain quality of clients? You know what I'm saying? So just kind of think about it like that. All right, next step, next step, next step, next step. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if y'all getting value from this. And um, yeah, let's continue. So you're going to acquire your first clients and work on your ability and get testimonials. So the ability part, that's one of our core values. We're big on ability. And being able to do the credit repair, right? So if you don't know how to do it, you're going to be looking crazy to your clients, right? And no one's going to work with you. The way I got my first clients, I took people on for free. And I definitely recommend you take people on for free. I've seen some of my mentees, they took themselves on for free. So me, technically, I never had bad credit. To be honest, I just had like a skinny profile. So I needed to add more stuff. And to be honest, like I had a lot of student loans. So I, I had a good number of stuff, but I just needed the, the only fixing I did was adding a authorized user trade line so that I can beef up my history. And then I went and got my funding. So me personally, I didn't go the route of being my own first client. But you could technically be your first client. If, if you have bad credit right now, fix your credit, be your own testimonial. You're seeing people do, do stuff like that. And then, you know, they get clients that way. So it's really, you know, however you want to paint the picture. You can get them for free. You can become your own first client, right? So work on your ability, understanding what laws go with how to delete this, understanding how to do X, Y, Z. And then again, like I said, we have a mentorship program. We walk you through it, right? We walk you through what people have done in the past and that kind of thing. So you can, if you if you know you're not fully confident in the process, you can try and figure it out on your own for free and be cheap, or you can get around the right people like our mentorship program that will teach you how to do it faster and easier. All right, let's, uh, let's continue, right? Let's continue, let's continue. Okay, so part of, part of this process, you want to identify the dispute software you're going to use. So we talk about this in my mentorship. Again, we use Client Dispute Manager. Some people talk about Credit Repair Cloud. I like Client Dispute Manager. It's more affordable, but you basically get the same thing. So you're not over, you're not overpaying for something, right? Because you want to, as a CEO, as a boss, you, you don't want you don't want to be cheap, but you want to minimize your costs, right? Because business is about making a profit. So Client Dispute Manager is what we use personally. All right, so you can identify the monitoring service you're going to have your clients use. So we use Identity IQ. So the dope thing, too, is like you make passive income because when we send our Identity IQ link to uh, clients to sign up with, you get paid a commission fee. So just kind of keep in mind, as you get more clients, you got a monthly as that you're getting. The next step, the next step, the next step, the next step. 
market your business while being cognizant of your client avatar. So you should have already created your client avatar based off of step three. So kind of like I told you, Maya 31, all that. So how I would market my business. So we've primarily been through online, but let me uh see what I put here on the presentation. So yeah, content creation. So I would create my content and think about, okay, I'm speaking to Maya. That's my client avatar or whoever your client avatar. Okay. I'm speaking to uh, Joseph, whoever your client avatar is. Okay, I'm speaking to Michael, right? Whoever your client avatar is. If your client avatar is me, then shoot, you're going your client avatar going to be the best client avatar in the world. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, no, I'm playing. So just uh, create your client avatar, create your content, and that'll bring you more clients. And you want to look at the content creation as digital real estate. When I say that, it's not that it's going to kick off right away, not necessarily, but sometimes, you know, you do get viral moments, but you just got to start. You could be on TikTok, YouTube, et cetera. We talk about this more in depth in my mentorship program, not to beat it like a dead horse, but at the same time, I just got to be real with y'all. The mentorship program got all the sauce. Y'all getting the free sauce. If you're getting sauce from this, there's more in the mentorship. Business cards promoting in person. So some people get clients in person. I've gotten clients in person as well. And you can create your own business cards, go to local meetups, go to local business meetups. If your client avatar has to do with business, just go wherever your clients are, right? You can go to dealerships, talk to them like, oh, what do, do you have a list of the people that they get denied? Can we work out something? I give you a referral fee every time I get a client, you know what I'm saying? So just, just think outside the box. Just think, sit and think, right? So word of mouth from your first round of clients, right? So the way I got my first round of clients, like I said, I took people on for free. They were like, oh, I'm getting results. They started telling people about me. I was giving them a re referral money for sending people over. So that's how we just got the, system rolling and that content too so yeah next step invest in yourself one thing i didn't even realize this was not planned but i have to invest in yourself hoodie right so invest in yourself me personally i'm not just saying invest in yourself just for fun i've invested thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars into myself if you don't know i literally invested thirty five hundred dollars specifically into myself to be able to learn the game about credit which led me to invest in more things. Like, okay, I spent 1000 here, 2000 here, 2500 here. And that initial $3,500 into the credit mentorship is what led me to invest in more to where I was able to eventually leave my nine to five. So I say that to say, had I not invested in myself, had I been cheap, I would have most likely still been working my nine to five. So sometimes you just got to understand. I know that this is how, this is how life works because I know some of y'all don't know how life works. So some of y'all, I, I can I can see where y'all coming from because you've been living you've been living this cheap mindset your whole life you've been living this poor mindset your whole life when when I say poor I'm talking about passing over opportunities repeatedly you've been living this poor mindset your entire life so when someone like me that's been investing in themselves is telling you to invest in yourself it looks kind of crazy like why would I pay somebody why would I do this why would I do all that it's because you have a poor mindset because you haven't done it before right so it, that's why it seems foreign but I encourage you. It don't even got to be invested with me. I just encourage you to invest in something. $3,500, it might be a lot of money to you. To me personally, that's that, that's no money. But I encourage you, if it's $100, right, whatever you can invest in yourself, if it's $200, if it's $2,000, whatever is a good amount of money to you to where you're not like looking for the next meal, I encourage you, invest in yourself and then come and let me know, come back and let me know like how you actually felt if you take action. If you don't take action, that's on you. If you just invest like twenty dollars in something, you're not necessarily that's not really investing in yourself. You're not, you're most likely not gonna take action on it. I'm just being real with you. So I know the concept of investing in yourself, it's foreign to you if you're cheap, if you're poor, if you got that poor mindset, if you got that nine to five mindset. I know some of y'all got that nine to five employee mindset. You just you just know like do what you're told, go on about like a regular life, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just I'm just explaining to y'all like what it is, you know? So I know when I'm speaking about investing yourself, investing yourself, some of y'all might take it personally because you just don't, you it's it's just something you've never experienced. So it doesn't make sense. But those of y'all that get it, y'all, y'all get what I'm saying. But I just I'm just trying to make sure that those of y'all that are like cheap understand what, you know, understand what I'm saying. So hopefully it makes sense. You can be offended. I don't know if you're offended or not, but if you are, if you do have a cheap mindset. I mean, if you are offended, you probably have a cheap mindset. I'm going to just be real with you. 
All right, so we literally have a mentorship program to ha hand hold you through the process, right? So when we talk about credit repair, you can try to figure it out on your own and be cheap, or you can, you know, invest in the right information. All right, and then the last step, step number seven is scaling, right? So when we talk about scaling, this is basically where we're at in our business. You want to reinvest your profits into hiring, and then we get into the complexities of getting more awareness because it's just numbers. Getting more awareness could be through content. It could be through ads. It could be through, you know, doing interviews, stuff like that. So that's kind of where we're at within our business. And if you do all of these steps, you're definitely going to have at least a five-figure business. So more than 10K per month, right? But you got to take action. But this is just high-level overview. Like I said, we got the mentorship program. We're going to talk about it in a little bit. But I hope that y'all been getting value. One thing, too. You want to read through the Credit Repair Organization Act. So 15 U.S.C. 1679. Again, I have a mentorship program. We walk you through the specific sections in the CROA that you want to be aware of so that you're in compliance and not violating the CROA. Because most of these credit repair companies, they don't know that they're violating the CROA. And that goes back to you don't know what you don't know. This is why I'm telling you, don't be cheap. Just invest in yourself. Because you might think like, oh, I know I can do it on my own. I can YouTube University it. This is how cheap people talk. This is how poor, cheap people talk. I could do it on my own. Why am I paying money? Why am I doing all this? Because they never invested in themselves and they don't understand the concept of you don't know what you don't know. But if you get out of your head and you actually invest in yourself, you're going to get access to new information, right? So keep that in mind. So I got some resources for cheap people. When I say cheap people, I spoke about this on my podcast. So the acronym, I told you all the acronym for poor. Poor is passing over opportunities repeatedly. Cheap is very similar. So cheap stands for constantly having excuses about prosperity. So you're you're killing your blessings by being cheap, by trying to shortcut the process. But let me let me let you know I got some resources for cheap people. So you can watch my free 2-hour masterclass, right? So cheap people also are like 9 to 5 mindset people. They're the same people that would be like, "Do you have your ebook and all your dispute letters for $10?" right? Like I don't have a team now I'm paying. You want me to pay my team a dollar? You know what I'm saying? So cheap people, not to find mindset people. You can watch my free two-hour masterclass I taught. It's basically going to teach you how to delete anything off your consumer report. Go get the bag, 100K in 90 days. So you can use that free information to get your credit repair business started. And then once you're actually making a good amount of money, then invest in yourself. It don't got to be with me, but it, I mean, it would logically make sense to be with me if you use my free information to make money. All right, binge listen to my podcast. I do have a podcast. You can go ahead and tap in on that. Binge watch it on YouTube. You're watching this on YouTube. You can binge watch the YouTube. Once you make money off of the free stuff, then come and invest with us. All right. So this is for the cheap people. It's for the cheap nine to five mindset people. All right. Let's let's talk with my uh my my investors. Let's talk with my people that take action. So we help credit repair business owners basically automate, scale their business past the five to ten k a month mark, and we basically serve nine to five working professionals or small business owners. We help them run their automated credit repair business to increase their income and buy their time freedom back. Also, those that are looking to transition, right? Maybe you're a small business owner in real estate. Maybe you're working a nine to five. You want to transition into credit repair. So we help y'all as well. We also serve current credit repair business owners that are not making the money that they want to make. So if you're a current credit repair business owner, you know you're not making more than five to 10K a month. Don't be cheap. Drop the ego. Invest in a mentor. Right. So we help you break that income ceiling. Basically, we help you make more while working less. That's that's essentially what you got to understand. So this is a cat credit. Retire your nine to five mentorship. So our dream client is a nine to fiver or a small business owner that's making money already. Right. So you can't come to us and be like, oh, I don't make money. I don't have money. Right. Fix your damn credit. Go take out a credit card and put it on the credit card. Right. You got money that way. So a nine to five or a small business owner that's making money already, but wants to do it quicker. So they want that freedom and they want to impact more people for their own happiness. We also serve current credit repair business owners, our dream clients that are stuck at four figures a month. So anywhere from one to $9,999 a month, right? So we help you scale past that mark based off of the information we have in the mentorship. So if you want to get tapped into the mentorship, I'm going to drop the link down below. You can book a call with someone on my team. You might get lucky. Maybe it's me to hop on a call and then we'll talk about, you know, getting into the mentorship program. But hopefully this video helped you. If you're cheap, take advantage of all the free stuff that I said. 
go make money. And then once, once you're ready to get out of that cheap mindset and come chill with the big dogs, book that call, book that free call. You can hop into the mentorship program. My action takers, those of y'all that's ready to, you know, make a consistent five figures a month. I'm going to see you on a call. Someone on my team going to see you on a call. We're going to see you on a mentorship. Y'all have a blessed one.